So no, we're up at the lake obviously again because that's the only place we make videos it seems like. But we're camping today and we're in the wilderness. Brady, what do you need? Where's the burgers at though, Rob? Right here. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, here we go. The Walmart trip was living hell, dude. We were in there for like an hour. Okay, well anyways, here's the tent set up. We got obviously the campfire, and then the lake's right over here where we jump. We might have to jump in, I don't know. It's over there. But we got a big ass tent. I mean, I think we're, I think this is pretty, uh, we're only here a night too, and we brought like everything. Kevin's here too. Yeah, there's fine craftsmanship right here. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is Wait, this is Kevin's right here? Damn. The ground is a little bit hard, so. You did a good job though, Kevin. Couldn't really get the stakes in. No, Kevin killed it. Well, no, Kevin's gonna blow away. He's gonna be in the middle of the lake tomorrow. All right, Brady, just tell me when you need more. You need the cheese? Uh, yeah, it's It's good to have farmer in situations like this because we almost couldn't get the fire started. It's raining, if you can't tell. Brady, how'd you get the fire to go if it was all wet? A lot of diesel. 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 Uh, take the seasoning salt. Oh, oh. oh, yep, seasoning salt. Is somebody spitting shit? Is that you? It's raining. No. No. Let me see them. Take the. I'm. Oh, I got it. What if you cut me right there, Brady? I don't care. Oh yeah. Come on. Get. Hold on. Get the. Get the shot. Hey, grab me the wide. The one that's like bent out. You know. Yeah. When I say we brought a lot of shit, dude. Look in the back of Brady's truck. His came packed. Is it in the tote? Uh, no, they should be like behind the tote towards my tab. Oh, is it? They got the blue handles? Yeah, dumbass. Do you need them both? I need the one that's here. widened out. Here, here, I got you. Oh, yeah, this one's wide. <laughs> Damn, those look good. Now, <laughs> look at the blue. Okay, here's the tent setup, man. This bitch sleeps four people. All right, so we're in the tent. We're gonna, Kai's gonna take us for a ride in the Razor in the dark. We're gonna hope we don't die. All right, let's go on the Razor ride, bruh. Let's go on the Razor ride. Hopefully, we don't get killed. Fuck! <laughs> you jumped a little bit. I did fucking jump, bud. Loud assist. <laughs> How fast do you whip around these corners, Kai? I kind of want you to go like fast, so you I don't want it to be like five miles per hour. Is it trail? Oh my god, it's fire! I'm coming undone to the I'm coming undone for look so Sean so delicate. We're stranded. We're stranded. He's got to do like a 17 point turn. Oh, we lived. Uh, we lived. All right, so while we were at the grocery store, we got some Feastables. We've never tried Feastables. So we're both gonna try them and we're gonna see if they're ass or pass or good. We're gonna see if they're good or not. All right, All right. we got the milk chocolate and original chocolate, I believe. Oh my God, it's got a share piece on it. Break one off and you share it. How do you do that? You break off the share part. All right, I'm just gonna try it. That's pretty good. I mean, it's good. Yeah, that's not bad. What was yours? What was your flavor? Milk chocolate. Oh, well, mine's just original. It honestly tastes the exact same as that one. I'm gonna be honest with you. You know what these taste like? What? Remember those golden coins? Dude, you get them in like literally, your elementary school like Christmas exactly parties and like, shit. Like they're good, but it's cheap chocolate. You know what I mean? It's not bad though. It's. I don't even know what we paid for. I don't know, it was an okay job. Yeah. Says so we got 169 people watching right now. Holy shit. Holy shit, guys. We're gonna get into cooler places because we have more viewers. Yeah, we'll buy another thousand. Yeah, we'll buy another thousand views every time we go somewhere else. Dude, Rob, you better oh, use that. Find them? I actually do need it. We're in Indianapolis, baby. Heading over to Craig's. Craig, 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 Craig! Hello, boys. <laughs> oh, Craig, look, Craig, come here, look at this real quick. We're on live. 239 people are watching, Craig. Why are you live? The, the better question is, why is there 248 people watching? Because you're popular on YouTube. Look, read the comments, what do they say? I don't know. What's your favorite game of all time? I don't know. Where did not just deliver? Where do you go? <laughs> He's always what? lived here. Am I post or am I? Rob, you're a little bit of everything. I mean, give me this, son. That's mine. Give me that. Hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me. Let's go, son. Let's go, baby. 
Oh, I'm, on right stick. I'm on the right stick, Rob. We time that bitch. Oh, there you go. Yo, yo, yo. For the last bullet. I hate green, son. One. Skip the BS and put everybody at the VS. PS, all I spit is F A C T S. The best, skip be less. Yes, say less. Top for the top, apex, everyday flex. Good evening, gentlemen. I am Ben Beachy, certified sports analyst, and welcome to our first segment of Treads Trades. Okay, come on, guys, let's go to talk. Let's uh, let's go back to week two with Treads' first trade. <laughs> which consisted of him trading away Travis Kelsey for Brees Hall and Michael Pittman, who, if I'm not wrong, were on his team for two weeks. After that trade, Travis Kelsey went on to score 12 points in week two, his first week on Tread's team, and 20 points in week three. Now, to compare to Pittman and Hall, who he traded for, uh, week two, Hall and Pittman combined for 14.5, which is only two points more than Kelsey. And in week three, they combined for uh, 20 points to match Kelsey's production from two players, by the way. His reasoning for trading Kelsey is because his team was complete dog shit week one, and he needed instant production from his players. Which is funny because he traded for Brees Hall, well known for coming off an ACL tear where he was not 100% and he was still on uh, a snap count. If Caleb's ball knowledge was actually a 10 out of 10, he would know that. Clearly it's not. Now that leads me into his second trade, which surprisingly came before week five where he traded Michael Pittman Pacheco and Zay Jones, and he received Dalvin Cook, Khalil Herbert, Jameer Gibbs, and Zay Flowers. And if I'm not mistaken, he started Zay Flowers for one game, and he got 12 points. Uh, Gibbs was hurt, Khalil Herbert was also hurt, and Dalvin Cook just sucks. And then Pittman, who he traded to Christian, scored 10 points that week, the first week after the trade. Zay Jones scored 11 and Pacheco scored 14 points. Okay, that's it for that trade. Speaking of Tread's ball knowledge, let me teach you a thing or two. Boom, you thought that was bad? Well, we're not done yet. In the following week, Tread decided to trade Herbert, who he just got in a trade, Brees Hall, who he just got a couple weeks before, and Tyler Lockett and he received Miles Sanders, averaging eight points a game, and TJ Hawkinson. Now, Hawkinson admittedly is a good tight end, but if Caleb actually had any real ball knowledge, he would know that Brees Hall was about to be removed from the snap count. And you know what Brees Hall did <laughs> right after he got removed? He scored 20 plus in two games straight on my team. And uh, Khalil Herbert, well, he got hurt, that's fine. I traded him away. And Tyler Lockett had a bye week the first week after the trade, and he just got 15 points for me this week. Meanwhile, Hawkinson only got 10 points, and Miles Sanders got zero, because he's hurt and he sucks. For Tread's next trade, he traded Jameer Gibbs for Jacoby Myers. And after that, Caleb decided to trade away Travis Etienne, Zay Flowers, who he just received, and TJ Hawkinson, who he also just received, in return for Devon Acham, who, uh, let's, let's note that he just got placed on the IR, and Caleb's a one in four team. So why is he trading away his best running back, Etienne, who just scored 23 points for Achan, who can't play for at least four more weeks? But he also received George Kittle, okay, big name, except for the fact he scored one point, along with Calvin Ridley, also a big name, but he scored five. And uh, Hawkinson, who he traded away, another good, another good performance from him, scoring another 10, 11 points. And Zay Flowers, who just scored 17 this week. Back to Etienne, who 
scored 36 last week, and then Caleb decided to trade him, uh, who scored, and then he scored 23 again this week. But the thing I forgot to mention before was that trading ETN for a running back that is on IR forced him to play Dalvin Cook this week, who scored 2.3 points for him. And immediately after trading for Kittle and Ridley, he trades them away for, let me check this. Am I reading that right? Chuba Hubbard and Robert Woods. And his reasoning was, I need an, R an RB that can get me 10 points. Okay, so let's check those stats real quick. Chuba Hubbard has 10 plus in two out of six games this year. One of those being exactly 10. He's averaging 8.2 points, and then one game he had that was over 10 was without Miles Sanders. And let's not forget to mention that the Panthers are the worst team in the NFL right now, currently the only team without a win. So I don't want anyone from that offense, let alone the RB2. And then Robert Woods, he's averaging 8.5 points. He hasn't scored over 7.6 since week two. He had one catch last week, and it just happened to be a touchdown to save his week to make it a decent seven points. But again, I'm not sure if that's a, that's a receiver that I'd want to replace Calvin Ridley with. Even though Ridley's been a little slow, he's still a lot better than Robert Woods is. Let me feed these chickens real quick. Actually, no eggs. Okay, so that's... And for our final trade of Treads Trades, he traded Justin Herbert, who is averaging the most points per game for any quarterback this year, and Tyler Higbee for Kirk Cousins, Ramondre Stevenson, and Deontay Johnson. Kirk Cousins has two out of his last three games under 10 points. Ramondre has half of his games under 10 points. And Deontay Johnson has been hurt since week one. All right, if more of Tread's trades end up in here, like they all have so far, we'll be back week 10 to update you on some more of Tread's trades, if he doesn't kill himself by then. <laughs> I love it. I'll make the trade if you walk the plank and take your panties off. The choice is yours.